Back here on the Rams roundup here at Bohoshi Field with Fordham softball, Drew Casey and head coach Bridget Orchard. And it's the championship edition. Four wins in a row for the fourth straight. What about this team? I mean, a lot of people probably said you lose the first game and there's no way they can do it, but you do it in 24 hours almost. Yeah, it's just incredible. As I said, I'm still kind of reliving it kind of over my head and it gets kind of all work. Once we kind of got rolling and then trying to think about the different games and who won this game, who got hit here and there, and it kind of blurred together. But like you said, it's just this team. There's something about them. They're just resilient. They battle. They fight. They never think they're out of it. They never out of it. What's going through your head after you lose to St. Joe's one nothing? Rachel Gillen pitches a gem, and then the nine hitter hits a three two pitch over the fence for her first career home run. What's what, what's the mindset after that game? Are you guys stunned, disappointed, shocked? No, I think the biggest thing, which is kind of it's kind of weird, is I didn't think we were out of like as soon as she hit it, and we, as soon as we lost, you know, St. Joe's was celebrating, and the first thing I said to the girls after was they didn't win anything. It's not over. It's double elimination. They didn't win. Didn't win. I just had some kind of gut feeling. I didn't know that we were going to win it, but I didn't think they were going to win it. So they think they just won this whole thing, but don't. And they were looking at them. And they were celebrating. Our girls a little shocked. It's a little stunned. This, that game, the double elimination, does not mean anything right now. It's over. And for whatever reason, I kind of had a feeling that they were over celebrating that nothing had been won yet. And I think maybe because it happened to us in 2010. We're in the same spot. We won. We thought we won the whole thing. And UMass came back and lost twice. So I had seen it done. I've been on the losing side of it. So I think I had that feeling. And as soon as it's over, I'm like, we're fine, we're fine, we're going to be fine. Like I said, we were going to come back, but I thought, you know what, it's not over yet. So then the next day, crazy weather all throughout the weekend. This We're talking Saturday now against Dayton, the two seed. So the one, two, and you're not even close to the championship game yet. Going to the 11th, now the 12th inning. I mean, so many chances. Dayton was not putting anything up on offense. Rachel Gillen pitched all 12 innings and retired the final 20 Dayton batters that she faced in that one. But... As the game kept going, did, did you start to get a little nervous that, okay, maybe one time through the order, Dayton's just going to hit a home run and maybe win this one, one nothing too? And I kept thinking we were going to score. <laughs> like, literally every <laughs> inning, I was like, seventh inning out of the rain delay. I'm like, okay, we got scrap bomb, we're buttoning her over, we're going to score, we're going to win the game in the seventh, then the eighth, and the ninth. And so every inning, I thought we were going to end the game. And never, like you said, when Rachel was throwing the gym, I did not think they were going to score. But I thought we were. I'm like, we're going to score. So we finally scored in the 12th. It's like, okay, finally. But it wasn't that feeling of, oh no, I was going to win. Not really you mentioned finally, and then the A-10 decides, okay, we'll just push everything to Sunday. Got to win three games in a row. What's the message that night to the team? Obviously, it's one at a time, but you as a coach must be thinking, okay, well, if we get to the third game, Rachel just threw all these pitches. through 12 innings, just through seven innings, the day before. Who's going to pitch? What's going through your head and your staff's uh, head at that point? I think we were set up pretty nice because what we kept thinking, like you mentioned, pitching is Lauren Quince had gotten us there. So I think in our mind, we thought, you know what, she got us there. She had beaten St. Joe's. She had shut St. Joe's out. She had been pitching all the way through. So it kind of worked out in the end there with having the pitchers. Because, well, Rachel threw a lot. We knew we had confidence going in with Quince. So we could start Rachel. We could start Lauren. With either one of them, I thought we could put ourselves in a good position knowing we still had two games against St. Joe's. So whoever pitched, the other one was going to have to throw us well. And I talked to Rachel that night, and she felt comfortable. And obviously, she was very sore for a lot of pitches. Then Aaron working with her, Josh working with her, and kind of getting her back in the condition, getting shape, getting ready to go. It was just a matter of well, our team scoring runs. <laughs> so you guys beat you, you guys beat UMass then uh, 9 a.m. Sunday morning. They come back around noon and play St. Joe's for the first one. It's an elimination game for you guys, and if they lose, then it goes to the final winner take all. You get to the winner take all point. What's the message between the first St. Joe's win and then getting ready for that second one? Because everything that you've done to get there essentially doesn't hold much weight if you don't win this next one. Exactly. And I think that's what the girls knew too. And they knew that we were not finished. Like we didn't do, and they know it because I think I've always kind of preached that. It's like we did not do a lot of celebrating. We, we beat, you know, beat Dayton. We're like, okay, we still have a game tomorrow. We beat UMass. We still got a game. We beat St. Joe's that first game and it was a great walk off win, but it wasn't they knew they were not done, so I don't think they had a lot of celebrating in the first game. So the second game, it was like, this is the game we can win and we can celebrate. But I think that their mindset going in was, we've came this far, we cannot lose this game. So that's what I think their riding factor was. We did not just play three games to get to the championship game and not win at all. So I think that kind of drove with them and was carried over into the game. It's like you wore St. Joe's down a little bit late in that game, tried to pull away, win the championship 5-1, and then there's the celebration, and, and when that final out, man, over and over to first for the final out, everyone mobs in the center of the field. What's going through your head? 
finally, <laughs> <laughs> finally, we did. We have to do it this hard way. But I think I was almost in a little disbelief too because it was. I'm like, did we really just play three games in a day? And again, we kept thinking the one game at time. We even got that game, and we even got that last inning. The last game, it's the third inning, and I'm like, I thought it was like the sixth or the seventh. You know, I looked at the scoreboard. I'm like, it's only the third inning. We, we had Rachel. Like, we, 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 Rachel could finish this game. We're gonna pitch three innings, and I thought it was like the fifth or the sixth, and it was the third. So I'm like, oh, yeah. Lauren's gonna keep throwing a little bit more when we get Rachel in there towards the end of the game. And we, Lauren ended up going, for, I think, five, almost a little over five innings. So we really only needed Rachel to throw that last inning we had, which was, which was great. But it definitely was one of those blurs when we won. It was, it was exciting, but it was almost like, it was kind of like a relief at the same time. Yeah, no, I can certainly agree with the, the blur part of the whole weekend. We're going to add another banner back here. Hopefully there's a little bit more also. <laughs> we, we don't, we're going to Oregon. Uh, it's a Eugene, Oregon. Oregon, Baylor, and Long Beach State in the regional. Oregon, yes, at 11.30 Eastern time on Friday on ESPN2 and on FUV. Coach, what's the, what's the message? What's the key to performing well out there and seeing what happens? I think the biggest thing is just taking advantage of the opportunity. And they talk about all the time in softball. You know, you never know what's going to happen. It's going to run in Alabama here. We beat them here the year they won the national championship. And we've played Oregon before. We're actually the top dog team. Went in five in the country. Baylor also was like, you know, like a top 16 team. Us is again just playing our game and knowing that they can know anything can happen. I think it's an experience that they'll you know, get to really get out there and see fans. It's going to be a sold out crowd. It's going to be loud again. It's going to be their fans, not our fans. But at the same time, I think it's something for especially the freshmen just to experience the opportunity. We've never been to Oregon before. I've never been there. We've never had a regional out there. They have a 17 million dollar stadium. So I think just playing in that atmosphere and just get forward them, like I said, uh, you know, on national television, get some exposure, being on TV, being able to see us. I think it's going to be great for the university, but obviously great for our girls as well. Coach, also going to be my first trip out there to Oregon. Looking forward to it. Best of luck, and we'll keep this ride going. Okay, thank you. Back here on the Rams Roundup at Pahoshi Field, the player portion as we get set to go to the NCAA Regionals in Oregon. Yes, and Lauren Quench joins us here at Pahoshi Field. Lauren, it's four in a row for this team, and you guys won four games in a row in 24 hours. Were you, how happy were you when it all ended and you won? <laughs> when it all ended? <laughs> um, so happy. We were, I mean, it was a long day, and we were just so excited to be back there, be back on top. I mean, once we got past the first game, we kind of knew. We were like, we're taking this. It's ours. So um, we were excited. <laughs> you guys lose to St. Joe's. Um, Friday it was with all the weather changes. And then you go out and play Dayton the next day on Saturday. You got a win. And then you probably thought you had to play another game. But then it went so long that they decide Sunday. But as that Dayton game keeps going and going, Rachel's on fire in the circle. She got the final, final 20 Dayton batters out. You guys had seemingly a chance almost every extra inning to win it and you win it in the 12th, was it just another sigh of relief and move on to the next? Yeah, it was. I mean, there was no doubt in any of our minds that we were going to win that game. Um, we just wish it happened in, like, the 7th or, or the 5th, not the 12th. Um, but Rachel was on fire, so there was no way she was letting up a run. No way our defense was letting up a run and no way that we were going to lose to them, especially going into the 12th inning. We were like, we have to win this now. It's been like five hours this game. <laughs> yeah, with the rain delay in the middle, yeah. yeah. It was, I don't even know how long it yeah. ended up being. But you guys then get to Sunday. We just mentioned it. You win the whole thing. But you hadn't pitched until Sunday. And then you, you pitch in multiple games on Sunday. What's your mindset? Because I'm sure you expected to get to that game three and knew you were going to pitch. But it's not thrown really a pitch in the whole tournament. So waking up <laughs> waking up really early Sunday, what's, what, where's your head at? Um, I mean, my whole kind of season has been – throwing two games in a day. Um, I mean, we've talked to the coaches here and there, and our strategy up to those games was, you know, we're going to go with Rachel. And um, going into Sunday, I was just like, be ready for anything. That's kind of how the whole season has gone. I mean, we had to be ready no matter what. If Rachel was doing um, bad, then I had to go in. Or if I was doing bad and she had to go in, like, everyone has to be ready. So um, going into Sunday, I was just like, let's go, let's get after it. What is it about this team that makes this bunch so resilient? Because you go back to all the walk-off wins in the regular season, all the comeback wins, and now this. Is, is there something that's just unique about this team? You've been a part of a couple of these championships now. I think with our team is almost like we refuse to lose, um, especially more so when it comes to the conference tournament time. Um, We've, we've been saying the whole season that when it comes to conference, we really turn it on. Like, we are almost like a different team. Um, 
But I think just showing early in the season, like against Bonnie's, against um, a couple other teams, like George Mason even that last weekend, we did go down at first and we came back from that. Especially with Bonnie's with the two walk-off home runs, like we knew that if we went down, we could come back. So I think that um, that just kept building our resilience. And ultimately, I think helped us throughout the whole tournament, obviously, I mean. But um, we also got out of some big jams and defense and our bats came alive on Sunday. You certainly did. Finally. <laughs> How nice is it to have Rachel back and you guys can be the one-two punch. And you have Lindsay too, one-two, three punch, because you two did a great job when she was down. But when you have both of you guys fully healthy, ready to go in the zone, how nice is that? It's amazing. <laughs> Coming from someone who's been the only one, or just me and Lindsay, going strong, having another arm is awesome. And especially since she's so different, we're all so different. So giving them a different look. Um, really works together for our staff. So. Last question, you're going to Oregon. It's back to practice here and get ready for that, but you're going to Oregon. I know, I'm so <laughs> excited. It's so awesome. It's their new stadium. We get to play on it. I'm so excited. Um, I mean, we did not expect to go to Oregon. That wasn't what we were predicted to go to, but, and even though they're the five seed nationally ranked number five, um, you know, we're excited and we're ready to go out there and play. All right, thanks so much. Best of luck. See Thank you out there. You. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that'll do it for this week's edition of the Rams Roundup here at Bohoshi Field. Thanks to Bridget Orchard and Lauren Quentz for joining us before the team heads out to Eugene, Oregon. Yes, folks, for the NCAA softball regionals, the fifth-seeded nationally Oregon Ducks host that regional with Long Beach State and also Baylor. First game for Fordham comes your way against Oregon on Friday, 11.30 Eastern time on ESPN2. Also on WFUVsports.org. We'll have the coverage all weekend on WFUV. Check your local listings for TV for the, for the rest of the weekend and FordhamSports.com as always. We'll see you out there, folks, from Bohoshi Field in the Bronx. Drew Casey for WFUV Sports.